This is a presentation concerning the economics of aflatoxin risk management for corn in Texas. The authors of the study are Dr. Joe Outlaw, Dr. Mark Waller, Dr. James Richardson, Jessica Sampson, Nicholas Richberg, Dr. Mark Welch, and Dr. Levi Russell. The research is partially funded by a grant from the Southern Extension Risk Management Education Center. Aflatoxin contamination is a perennial problem in Texas and can result in numerous difficulties for producers, marketers, and consumers of grain. One of the reasons it is such a big concern is that aflatoxin is a serious poisonous substance and has been classified as a group one carcinogen. Even at small levels of contamination, humans and animals can suffer serious health-related problems. Depending on the level of contamination, market outlets for grain are restricted from various uses, such as exports or human food use. Significant price discounts can be charged for grain with aflatoxin contamination levels above certain levels, resulting in potential economic losses for producers. Grain buyers or users may avoid production regions where aflatoxin contamination is most likely to occur on a regular basis. This can result in lower prices for producers throughout the region even if they do not have an aflatoxin contamination problem themselves. Market outlets for aflatoxin contaminated grain are restricted based on published FDA action levels as seen in the table below. In addition, in Texas, corn testing between 20 and 50 parts per billion may be distributed when destined for wildlife, and corn testing between 300 and 500 parts per billion requires a blending permit issued by the Office of the Texas State Chemist or must be destroyed. Grain with an aflatoxin contamination level under 20 parts per billion is not restricted and can move through any market channel going for human food use, exports, or a wide variety of feed uses. As contamination levels increase, the possible uses of the grain are more restricted, and consequently price is usually discounted. As seen in the next slide, corn with an aflatoxin contamination level below 20 parts per billion usually does not suffer a price discount. However, as contamination levels increase, the price discounts tend to increase as well. While the discount table presented here is from a Central Texas elevator during the year of 2013, discounts in other years may be smaller or larger depending upon overall supply and demand conditions and the amount of aflatoxin-contaminated grain being marketed in specific years. In recent years, producers have begun to increase the use of products they call atoxigenic products that utilize strains of Aspergillus flavus that do not produce aflatoxin. Producers apply these products in hopes that the atoxigenic strains will make it to the corn first and prevent the aflatoxin-producing strains from colonizing and producing aflatoxin. Two such commercially available products are named AF36 and Aflagard. As agricultural economists, we are concerned with whether these products are effective in reducing aflatoxin levels and whether they are economically beneficial to Texas producers. In other words, does their economic benefit outweigh the cost of their use? 
If we look at the results of field tests during 2007 and 2008, we can see that both Affleguard and AF36 were effective in field level studies. In general, aflatoxin contamination levels were reduced by 80 to 90 percent. However, multiple plot trials conducted by Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service faculty across various Texas locations during 2011 showed more variable results in their ability to reduce aflatoxin levels. For this study, Data was collected from cooperators of treated and untreated fields in Central Texas covering the years 2011, 2012, and 2013. As seen in the 2011 data scatter plots on this slide, while there appeared to be substantial aflatoxin contamination in the non-treated field data, aflatoxin contamination in the treated fields was much lower. The products appeared to be having the desired effect. As seen in the 2012 data scatter plots on this next slide, aflatoxin contamination was not as prevalent in the non-treated fields. While there appeared to be good control in the treated fields, a number of non-treated fields also had very low or no aflatoxin contamination. This is the kind of year when it may not have paid a lot of producers to actually apply product since aflatoxin contamination was not a big issue. As seen in the 2013 data scatter plots on the next slide, there appears to have been even less of an aflatoxin contamination problem in the non-treated fields. While treatment still appears to reduce the likelihood of aflatoxin contamination, the difference may not be as dramatic in some years because aflatoxin contamination is not as prevalent in those years. In testing whether atoxigenic products are economically beneficial to Texas producers, variability becomes a critical issue. What works or seems cost effective in one year may not have the same effect in another year. Several factors, such as variability in the occurrence of aflatoxin contamination levels, variability in the effectiveness of atoxigenic products, variability in test results at the elevator or by insurance adjusters, and variability in price discounts from year to year can all impact the results of an economic analysis. For that reason, this study was conducted using simulation analysis to allow for stochastic variables. This will help account for all of the uncertainties a producer must take into consideration each year as they are deciding whether to treat with atoxigenics or not. The simulation model developed for this study conducts a farm level analysis. Atoxigenic product cost is assumed to be $16 per acre with $11 per acre for product cost and $5 per acre for aerial application costs. Corn production budget data for Central Texas was obtained from Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service budgets. These budgets are publicly available on the Ag Economics Extension website and were built by extension economists with input from area producers. The treated and non-treated field data collected from Central Texas for the 2011, 2012, and 2013 years seen in the previous graphs were used to simulate treated and non-treated aflatoxin contamination levels for this study. The stochastic variables 
those allowed to vary or change across the simulations in the model include yield, local market price, aflatoxin test results, and crop insurance indemnity payments. The simulation model generated 500 iterations for treated and non-treated fields of different yields, prices, aflatoxin test levels, and crop insurance indemnity payments based on historic risk for these variables using Central Texas corn partial budget production data. Choice is revenue protection at the 70% coverage level with enterprise unit coverage. The insurance base price was assumed to be $4 per acre. The APH was assumed to be 75 bushels per acre. The simulation analysis results showed a clear difference between treatment and non-treated scenarios in the percentage of truckloads that tested over 20 parts per billion of aflatoxin. In other words, the simulation results suggested that the atoxigenic products were effective in reducing aflatoxin contamination levels. Keep in mind that this result is a function of the three years of Central Texas data used in this analysis. Different data from different locations could possibly provide a very different result. The average revenue for treated fields was $18 per acre higher compared to the non-treated fields. After subtracting out the applied cost of atoxigenics at $16 per acre, the treated fields still showed an average advantage of $2 per acre compared to the non-treated fields. These results suggested that there is an economic advantage to treatment. That advantage will be higher in years with more aflatoxin problems and less in years with reduced aflatoxin problems. While this analysis suggests an economic advantage to treatment with atoxigenic products, it may underestimate the true value of those products since it does not take into consideration the impact of aflatoxin contamination on the price discounts that may be associated with the regions that have a reputation for aflatoxin contamination problems. These benefits may show up as improvements in the cash futures basis relationship over time and reduced handling and segregation costs at the elevator. If these benefits do exist, they would just further increase the advantage of treatment over non-treatment. A downloadable Excel spreadsheet has been developed and placed on an extension website so that producers can conduct their own analysis using their own data. That website is listed at the bottom of this concluding slide. In addition to that Excel spreadsheet, there are also two fact sheets that may help explain more about the economics of aflatoxin risk management and this study. This concludes the presentation. Thank you for your time and attention.